In the Ross Sea region of Antarctica, China has just completed one of the world's most extreme engineering feats. This is Qinling Station, built in one of the most violent climates on the planet. This is not a simple base. It's a climate-proof bunker, a technological statement, and a new benchmark for green energy at the edge of civilization. But what exactly led China to plant this frozen flag in the far south? And how did engineers manage to build it in a place where even steel breaks? The Ross Sea coast is infamous for its violent downwinds, which regularly reach hurricane strength and can smash unprotected structures. Temperatures regularly plunge below minus 40, and in the depths of winter, they can dip below minus 50. These conditions destroy electronics, warp metal, and turn ordinary building materials brittle. So the engineers behind Chinling designed it as a kind of thermal armor, a self-contained shell that could withstand years of unrelenting pressure. The main building spans 5,244 square meters, about the size of a professional football field or large supermarket. Its design is based on the Southern Cross constellation, a tribute to Ming Dynasty navigator Zhang He, who once used the same stars to guide his ships. But the shape also serves a practical purpose. The long axis of the building is aligned with the prevailing wind direction, while the ground floor is partially elevated. This aerodynamic layout allows wind to pass through and around the structure. Due to the continent's short construction season, engineers had only a few months, between November and February, to do any work. To speed up construction, Chinling was designed with a modular steel frame, prefabricated in China, then shipped to the Ross Sea and assembled on site like Lego bricks. This modular strategy drastically reduced build time and exposure to harsh weather. But even with a strong design, the real challenge was insulation. Chinling's outer shell is a study in extreme energy efficiency. The station uses a PIR super insulation system, panels made from polyisocyanurate, a material with a thermal conductivity of just 0.024 watts per meter kelvin. For comparison, the walls of a typical residential house might allow 10 to 20 times more heat loss. The insulation works like a giant winter coat, wrapping the entire building to keep heat inside. But the real masterpiece is in the windows. Each window is crafted from a polyurethane composite, reinforced with glass fiber. They have five layers of glass with three separate air gaps in between, giving them a heat transfer coefficient of 0.6, far better than even high-end polar architecture. The frames are vacuum-formed, keeping moisture out and heat in, and they're as strong as steel but 50% lighter, helping the team install them quickly during narrow construction windows. Imagine your car window, but with five panes of heat-trapping glass and insulation that could survive outer space. Over 1,100 curtain wall modules were used, all connected with a full-break bridge design, a structural feature that stops thermal leaks. This reduced heat loss by over 60% compared to traditional polar buildings. And the exterior? It's clad in stainless steel and aluminum composite panels, forming a durable sandwich structure that resists snow, wind, and shifting temperatures. The entire station becomes a sealed shell, capable of shielding its residents from conditions that would shut down nearly any other operation on Earth. But insulation and architecture are only part of the survival equation. Next, they needed power and that would require an entirely new approach. In a place where fuel can't be delivered easily and where diesel spills would be an ecological disaster, Chinling needed a clean, reliable year-round power system. The answer? A hybrid grid that uses wind, solar, hydrogen, and minimal diesel only as a last resort. As of March 1, 2025, the system went live. It starts with 10 wind turbines capable of generating a combined 100 kilowatts of electricity. Next come 130 kilowatts of solar panels deployed across the station to capture sunlight during the brief Antarctic summer. Together, these renewable sources supply 60% of the station's energy, cutting over 100 metric tons of fossil fuel use per year. That's enough electricity to power 45 homes year-round in a place with almost no light for half the year. To handle the dark winter months, the station includes a 30-kilowatt hydrogen fuel cell system backed by a 300-kilowatt-hour low-temperature battery. When winds stop and sunlight fades, the hydrogen unit kicks in, providing continuous energy for up to 14 days straight. Even better, the system stores excess wind and solar energy to produce hydrogen on-site, creating a closed energy loop. That hydrogen isn't just fuel, it's backup life support. Building all this required extreme simulation. 
At Taiwan University of Technology, engineers created a digital twin laboratory capable of replicating up to 10 extreme Antarctic conditions, including cold, wind, magnetic field interference, and blizzards. Every component was tested before leaving China, because in Antarctica, if one screw fails, we can't replace it. But with energy and heat secured, one final system remained. Chinling doesn't just power itself, it also provides its own clean water, waste processing and communications infrastructure, making it a true self-contained island in Antarctica's frozen desert. Water is created using two desalination systems, each producing 20 metric tons of fresh water every 10 hours, enough to refill an Olympic swimming pool in a few days. All wastewater is treated on site, and solid waste is shipped back to China, ensuring zero environmental impact, much like the International Space Station model. For communication, the station is equipped with advanced satellite systems that support both data transmission and emergency operations. A dedicated ground station keeps researchers linked with the outside world. However, some international observers have raised concerns about potential dual-use capabilities, suggesting that this communications infrastructure could also serve military or surveillance purposes. China strongly denies these claims, insisting the base is fully scientific in nature. Still, China's strategy is clear – to become a polar power by 2030. And with the Antarctic Treaty up for review in 2048, Chinling could play a central role in the future of global polar governance. Chinling Station stands today as proof of what modern engineering can achieve in the world's harshest conditions. From layered glass windows to wind-driven hydrogen power, from frozen construction modules to climate-sealed walls, this base does more than survive – it thrives. To truly appreciate the scale of Qinling Station, you need to understand the speed and intensity with which China has expanded its presence in Antarctica. This journey began in 1984, when China launched its first Antarctic expedition. Just one year later, the Great Wall Station was born, marking China's initial entry into polar science. Ambition soon pushed inland. In 2009, China established Kunlun Station perched high on Dome A at 4,087 meters above sea level. Its purpose? Unlocking deep ice core data that could offer clues about Earth's climate history. Then, in 2014, Taishan Station opened as a critical logistical node between Kunlun and Zhongshan. These stations were supported by advanced icebreaker ships, like the 122-meter-long Zhulong-2, capable of delivering thousands of metric tons of materials across Antarctica's treacherous seas. All of this led to Qinling, the fifth and largest of China's Antarctic bases, a permanent presence in one of the most punishing corners of the Earth. But this is only one pole. Halfway around the world in the Arctic, stations float on shifting ice sheets, drill into glaciers, and face down polar bears. They're built by different nations for different reasons. Join us next as we travel into the Arctic's most extreme scientific outposts and uncover what it takes to survive and explore in the North.